What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome to a quick optimization guide for Grounded 2. Obviously, we've got very limited settings in the early access stage right now, but I'm going to show you something I'm pretty sure no other YouTuber has shown you to get the best performance out of this game. So let's do it here first. Obviously, this video is not going to cover Windows optimization at all. Instead, you'll find related guides in the description down below to get even more performance out of your system. Before we get to our special tweaks, obviously, let's check out what options we have currently and sort out the in-game optimization as much as we can first. Obviously, I've spent far too long up playing around with configuration files, so it's rather late. Definitely do let me know if this helps you down below. So without further ado, I've hopped straight into the game, past the tutorial, and I'm sitting at a solid 20 FPS. Not the best. Pausing, heading into options, followed by display at the very top. Over here, we can get at least some performance from our system. Starting off with the display settings, you should be playing full screen for the best input latency and performance, but obviously, if you like tabbing in and out a lot, playing windowed full screen is more than fine. Make sure your resolution matches your monitor. And of course, the render scale is set to 100%. Otherwise, things will be needlessly blurry. Quality, I'll step over for now. Frame rate limit set to unlimited in order to benchmark your game properly. Later on, especially if you're playing handheld, cap this to a little bit below what you're actually getting to save battery power performance, generate less heat, etc. Depth of field blur is entirely your preference. You can only turn it to low here. You can't turn it off completely. VSync always have this turned off unless you're getting screen tearing, gamma, motion blur, chromatic aberration, and field of view are all your preference as well. Obviously, field of view is going to affect your performance somewhat, but it really matters to whatever feels the best for you. It should not matter at all what it does to your FPS. Besides that, there's not too much else that we can get from this menu here, except for this one particular quality option. We can't break down this individually. We can only pick between four different presets. Sets, so we'll need a workaround to get any more control over this, which I'll get to just now. Starting off with the default Epic preset at 2K with a 3080 Ci. On a pretty beefy system, I'm stuck at 20 FPS. When I'm not recording, this was around 25-ish. Moving this down to medium, you'll see there's a pretty big boost to 28, 29 FPS. That's a bit better. Stepping down to medium, 37, 38, much more playable. All the way down to low, I'm getting a solid 43 FPS, which is not the best. And of course, there's some really weird things happening with shadows, etc. I wouldn't recommend playing at low at all in this game unless you absolutely have to play with the medium preset at worst, preferably. Obviously, we can use frame generation, lossless scaling, to get upscaling in this game as there's currently not FSR or DLSS, nothing like that. I'm pretty sure it's just the built-in Unreal Engine at TAA. I'm not entirely too sure. You can try lowering your render resolution, but obviously up to a certain point, things are going to get really blurry for not the best boost in performance. So let's take a step back and figure out what exactly we can do. Obviously, there's nothing that we can do in game here. And on the lowest settings in game, I'm sitting at a solid 44 FPS, which is not the best. Whatever platform you're on, save the game, and close it. Here's where the workaround fun begins. Obviously, I have this game through the Xbox Game Pass. You can own it on Steam or anywhere else. The steps are going to be pretty much exactly the same. To simplify things a lot, head across to my website linked down below, where you'll find this incredibly simple article linked about the Grounded 2 optimization using some config file magic. Obviously, you might have seen this little block before, but things do get quite exciting. So for now, at least, scroll down on this page until you see open the config folder. It should be right near the top. Find navigate to followed by this path here. Select this path as such, copy this, and then hold start or the Windows key and press R at the same time to bring up this window here. Paste it in, and then all you need to do is hit enter. This will open up, see your users, your username, app data, local, followed by Augusta, which is, I guess, the code name for this game, saved config. Inside of this folder, regardless of what platform you own the game on, you'll see Windows, WinGDK, WinGTRS, or something similar. Open up whatever flavor of Win you see here. Inside of this folder, you should see game user settings.ini, and inside of this, you'll probably see some graphics options like this. Now, unfortunately, no matter what you do to these, the game's just going to flat out ignore it, which is a little bit sad. I assume at some stage in the future, this file will become modifiable and actually take action in game, but of course, 
when that comes around, we'll probably have sliders for each of these in game. Anyways, as this is an Unreal Engine 5 game, we can create new configuration files here. They'll just be loaded by the engine and processed as if they were supposed to be there from the start. Scrolling down here, you can see the first copy of a file called engine.ini. Containing just these seven lines of code, it'll go ahead and disable Lumen in game, which is the resource intensive lighting engine, turn off film green, and do something with volumetric fog. Obviously, you might not think that this is going to do a lot, but all we need to do is drop this into our flavor of Windows folder over here as engine.ini. Instead of creating the file yourself, which you can, right click, new, text document, and then just make sure to rename this to engine.ini. You can copy and paste in this code over here, or you can just choose the small download button over here to download this simple file straight from my website. Then place it in the Windows folder that we have open here. Opening it up, you can see our text is in here, as we'd hope. Now, something you'll need to keep in mind is the game will periodically clear this folder here whenever you launch and close it. Right-click engine.ini, choose properties, and then make sure read only is ticked over here. Hit OK, and that's it. Now we can launch the game and you should immediately see a big performance boost. You can see my numbers pre Previously here playing on ultra wide, but of course I'm now playing in a more regular 16 by 9 and recording at the same time so the numbers are different, but you should see a similar boost. Remember we were getting around 40-ish FPS, well we're now getting almost 50 with the same exact settings in game. That's huge. So this is low, once more. Medium, we're getting around 42 FPS, so we only really drop down to the low preset, which we used previously, up to high, where I'm getting a solid 32 FPS, which is more than playable, although a bit cinematic. And finally, up to epic, where we're now getting around 24, 25 FPS. Not too bad. Obviously, I'll mainly be playing this game in its current state, somewhere around the medium preset here, where there's a good amount of performance, 40 FPS, good, I suppose, with the best looking graphics, at least for now. Obviously, motion blur may hide a bit of the choppiness when you look around, which is a reason to leave it turned on. Otherwise, you can crank it down to 0% if it's giving you motion sickness and things like that. Obviously, this isn't exactly the best, and this is as far as I've seen other people go with this configuration file out on the internet. Obviously, I thought a bit further than that, and in my previous video, Optimizing Killing Floor 3, I had a similar engine file optimization that had even more going on, so I thought, why don't I just throw all of these options in here, and of course I combined it with the existing Lumen options. These play around with TAA, reflections, fog, tone mapping, things like that. And of course, once again, we can just download the engine file here, or copy everything, and once again place it in this Windows folder over here. Just remember to edit this file, you'll need to right-click, properties, and make sure read-only is turned off. Once we've updated it with all of these new options here, we can once again right-click properties, read-only on, and launch up the game to see the differences. Now, this for me at least, at 2K ultra-wide while I wasn't recording, took me from 22 to 27. With this extra bit of tweaking over here, it took me all the way up to 30, which is pretty big. Medium went from 43 to 49, then 53, and of course low from 51 to 60, which was a pretty big jump, up to 61. So the rest of these options here don't really do all that much on the low preset, but on medium and above, they really do. Checking it out while I'm recording at 2K, 16 by 9 with our new changes playing at Epic, we're sitting at a solid 26 FPS, which I don't think is that much higher than it was, down to high, a solid 35, feels pretty good, to medium, where I'm now at 45 FPS, and then finally, to low, where we're getting around 51, 52. So obviously I thought, well, why not just throw some more options in there to see what happens, and it actually had a pretty positive effect on the performance of the game. Obviously, in the future, there'll probably be some more things that can be added to this file, and of course, as I have this file up for download on my website, once again linked down below. I'll make sure to update it as time goes by. Maybe I'll make a community post or something like that, so do make sure to stay subscribed, especially if this kind of thing matters to you. Of course, when the game actually adds proper options in-game, you'll see another updated guide for this, assuming people are still enjoying it. And of course, hopefully for now at least, you can enjoy the game for what it is, even if it is still pretty early access, and there's a lot that needs to be tended to. But yeah, thank you all for watching, mine's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.